Hi everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking all about Huntington's disease. So, let's get into it. Huntington's disease is a rare condition. It is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder. And what happens in Huntington's disease is that the patient has progressive degeneration or breakdown of the nerve cells in the brain. So over time, they start to lose function and they don't work as well. So what nerve cells specifically? Those that affect voluntary movement and memory. The two types of Huntington's disease are adult onset and early or juvenile onset. Like the name suggests, early onset happens in children or teenagers, and this is very uncommon, very rare, so a rare form of an already rare disease. And then the more common is the adult onset, and usually seen around um, age 30 or higher. When it comes to our signs and symptoms, we're going to see things like chorea or dystonia, which are those involuntary um, muscle contractures and movements of like the hands and the arms and the face, right? So they can't control that, which makes sense because if we think back to the path though and what's happening in the body, those are the nerves that are being affected, the ones that control movement. So we're starting to see those symptoms. We're starting to see where they're unable to control those movements. Eventually, over time, they can develop difficulty with their speech or swallowing, so aspiration risk right there. Um, depression. Depression is a big thing that we see in Huntington's disease, and it's something we need to watch out for because these patients can often have thoughts of death, dying, and are at risk for potential suicide. So we need to make sure that we're monitoring their mood as well. They might lack impulse control have issues with insomnia, and then therefore fatigue, and then unintentional weight loss. And then the blue here, I just wanted to point out, because Huntington's disease is more often the adult onset kind, so these are the big symptoms you're gonna see, but if you do have a child who has early onset, these are a little bit more typical, the symptoms. So difficulty with like paying attention or concentrating, they might have seizures, and these uh, muscle movements here might negatively affect their ability to walk, so their gait pattern, and they are more likely to have falls. Huntington's disease is progressive, so it goes through stages of severity. So starting with those early stages, this is when the patient is going to have more mild symptoms, and sometimes they might not be as aware, they might try to play it off as like, oh, I'm a little bit clumsy, or you know, I'm feeling kind of moody, or I have a hard time concentrating, that sort of thing. So it might not be as obvious during that early stage. During the middle stage, now those symptoms have gotten worse. They've become a lot more obvious. So these make like daily tasks more challenging and difficult for them. So things like driving, eating, swallowing, or speech, they might start having issues with that kind of stuff. Typically in this stage, they're able to perform like their ADLs, their activities of daily living independently but it's a little bit more challenging for them. And at this stage, now they have an increased risk for having a fall. And then the final stage, the end stage, is now they're not really able to do so much for themselves. They're gonna become more dependent on others for their care because it has gotten worse and worse and it's harder for them to do daily tasks on their own. And I do wanna point out, even though this sounds like, oh, it's the end, People don't die from Huntington's disease itself. This is not fatal. Typically what kills them is complications from the disease that happen in the end stage. Things like infections, like pneumonia, or injuries from falls, that sort of thing. That's what's going to kill them, is the complications, not the disease itself. Aside from those signs and symptoms and getting a detailed patient history, some other things we can do to help make this diagnosis would include, of course, genetic testing, because it's a genetic disorder, 
and then MRI or a CT scan, probably both, just so we can see what's going on in the brain. So those imaging studies can be really helpful in diagnosing this disease. And when it comes to our nursing interventions, remember this is not something we're gonna cure, right? Um, we're gonna be more focused on safety and helping with those symptoms, how to manage those symptoms. So our priority really is going to be education, educating the patient and educating the family because it is progressive. So the way the patient is acting now is going to change. It's going to be different over time. So letting them know what to anticipate and how to make sure that the loved one or that themselves are safe. Okay, that's our priority here is safety. When it comes to medications, we have lots of different options depending on what's going on with the patient. So Haldol can be given for those involuntary movements. Lithium is a mood stabilizer that can be used for patients who are needing that. We know depression is a major symptom, so antidepressants and antipsychotics can be really helpful as well. Speech therapy. So remember, they lose their speech, they lose their swallowing ability. So we have to be really careful with that. And speech therapists can be really helpful. And then dysphagia education. This is gonna be a priority, especially if they are in that middle stage and what to anticipate as they get towards the end stage. So dysphagia education for our patient. So difficulty swallowing, what to do if you're having difficulty swallowing. So tuck your chin to your chest when you swallow. Make sure you chew your food thoroughly and we don't take such big bites. Wait after eating for about a half an hour, sit up. Don't go lay down after eating so that you can not aspirate because these people are at high aspiration risk and then check for pocketing of food. So sometimes they don't realize that they have food stuck in between like their teeth and their cheek. So checking after they're done to make sure that there's no food in there that they can choke on. So being very well aware that these patients are high fall risk and high aspiration risk patients and then making education and safety our priority as the nurse. And that's Huntington's disease. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.